Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Ellie Perriman. Thanks, thanks for being on the show, Ellie. Absolutely. Absolutely. My pleasure. How are you, Whitney? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, Ellie. Uh, Ellie helps passive investors find the most profitable deals in the strongest markets across the U.S. and maximize their returns by implementing a comprehensive value-add plan uh, to unlock investment value and, and increase profitability. She has extensive experience in commercial real estate law and property management uh, and property management has enabled her to approach investments with a diverse angle and unlock overlooked potential in multifamily properties. Anyway, thanks, for, thanks again, Ellie, for being on the show. And uh, give us a little background about how you got into real estate and, and uh, specifically the syndication business. Sure. So my journey actually starts in Israel um, a few years before the crash. And uh, I, was, uh, I was a commercial real estate lawyer. I was working on huge deals. Um, and that's how I started in real estate, not an investor, but I was helping other syndicators build, you know, uh, build their empire. And um, after that, I decided to transition out of real estate um, law to, to the actual side of, of the business side of real estate. And I worked as a property manager. And uh, the third stop was investing, which is, you know, what I'm doing now. In between, um, I had a, um, I spent two years um, at MIT when uh, I got my MBA degree. I wanted to understand more about the business side, understand, uh, I learned how to raise capital, um, how to read and create uh, financial reports and how to do marketing. Um, I covered, you know, everything from machine learning, you know, they're, it's a very tech oriented school, um, to, you know, taking also very specific classes about real estate development and underwriting. So, um, transition from there to what I do now, which is, um, you know, syndication. Um, and before that, I also invested passively in real estate. That was a, a great learning, uh, you know, avenue for me. And that's, uh, and here we are talking today about real estate. Awesome. So Ellie, I've known Ellie for a little bit now and, and we were able to catch up this past weekend in Denver at a conference and, and I was able to hear Ellie speak about uh, some specific ways she, she is able to use uh, social media to raise capital and how that's helped her. And, and I just thought it'd be a great topic for her to come on and share with listeners. And uh, Ellie, would you get us started, you know, with maybe some, some ways we haven't thought of and, and uh, what, what we should be thinking about. And obviously I'll have questions along the way because it's stuff I want to implement also. Sure, sure. So for me, it took me about a year to understand exactly how to do it. I I tried many things and I failed along the way. So, um, you know, looking back, I, I, you know, I created this thought leadership platform that I have today and I'm still working on it. And there's still, you know, you can always do better. Um, and I realized looking back that the first step that, uh, that anyone who's getting into real estate and anyone who's trying to uh, you know, build a solid thought leadership platform and raise capital that way. The first step is to, you know, kind of set up the goals and understand the why, why you're doing this, because that will determine everything that you, you're going to do. Um, some people, you know, use social media because they want to get into real estate and some people do it because they're already in real estate, but they want to expand their business. And understanding why can really help you, um, it can really help you when things are going to get, you know, difficult and, challenge, and challenges are going to come. And, and I just heard a, um, this week a great quote, um, and, and it goes, follow, uh, don't follow your dreams, fight for them. Because if you just follow your dream, you know, you have a dream, you follow it, it gets difficult and then you you can give up. But if your mindset is, I have a dream and I'm going to fight to get it, you're going to be there every step of the way and you're more likely to actually achieve it. So that's, so basically the first step is to understand why you're doing it and that's going to help you fight your dream 
and get and get there. Maybe, and, maybe give us a little a definition of like what is it, just in case a listener hasn't heard that term before, like thought leadership platform. What is that, and why why do we need that? Excellent question. So a thought leadership platform, the way that I see it and I understand it is to be a, a leader in a certain dimension, in a certain industry, um, and educate others um, in, in using multiple verticals of social media. Um, so for instance, being active on LinkedIn, have a website, be active on, on forums, and, uh, and I'm going to you know, talk about it in, in one of the next steps. But basically, you're positioning yourself as a leader and you're bringing your thinking and your knowledge and experience into that platform and you share it with the world. Nice. Um, yeah. And so after, you know, the first, after the first step, which is basically understanding your why you move forward to understand who you are and who, and because that's going to help you determine the avatar, the avatar of who your, your audience is. So I actually, took a piece of paper and I wrote down who I was, you know, I'm, I'm a woman, obviously I'm an Israeli. Um, I was a lawyer and I was also a, you know, young professional or educated person. And I, and I said, these are my four, four circles. I know a lot of people, you know, from MIT, a lot of people from the legal, you know, my legal background. And I knew people from each of those four circles. And then I started um, to, focus on the circle that I think would be, will bring me, you know, the best results. And based on that, I built my avatar. I knew who I was targeting. Who, and that's the third step to target, know who you're targeting, because everything you, I created before I started doing anything, I, the, the one main thought in my mind was, is this going to be appealing to my audience, the specific audience that I chose? Um, and it could be, you know, I've seen other syndicators that um, they they targeted retirees, so or or people who are targeting um, women, and and I think that that that's really great. And I know some syndicators who are raising money from where they are. So I have a fellow syndicator, I have a good friend that he he lives in Israel, and this is where he's raising the capital from, and he's positioned there, so it's easier for him. So knowing who you are and then attracting capital from people that are like you, I think that can go a long way. And some of my investors are in fact lawyers, but I chose to focus on the professional and educated part. And when I write my content, every content that I create, I basically target these people. I target people who are looking for certain knowledge um, that want to get slightly deeper than, you know, a, other investors and it has been working great for me. So what are some ways you found to maybe help you? I don't know if it's a writer's block or, you know, whatever they call yeah. it. Uh, you know, I just, you know, writing content is just not something I get too excited about. You know, it, you know, is it, is it just something that I'm probably making too big a deal about, you know, or, or putting to, you know, help me get past that, you know, or maybe the listener says, I just don't enjoy writing, you know, but is it something so actually, you know, should I break it down to once a month or, you know, once a week, or is it something maybe, you know, there maybe a technique I could use to make it easier than I probably think it is. Yeah. And I'm really glad that you asked this question because I was also struggling with the same issue. I mean, I have to be honest. I love writing. I used to be a lawyer. We write, we like to write and to, and to talk. And um, even though it came natural for me, I mean, English is my second language. So I still had to, to hire someone to go over and, you know, kind of go over my articles and make sure that grammatically everything was fine. Um, sometimes I would, you know, kind of uh, find mistakes on my own or find mistakes and mistakes that, that they've done. But um, there are two things that I can say about that. The first thing is to batch. Um, and it, that goes, and I'm sure you do it with the podcast as well. I have a weekly podcast. I don't record each week. I have one day and I block it only for interviews and I do back to back and then I don't need to touch it for an entire month. And the same with writing. When I first started, I wrote everything and I blocked one day and I just did it because when I started to write and then you get distracted, you have a, a, 
you know, a, a deal to look at, review the numbers or, or talk to investor, whatever it is. And then you need to go back. It's hard to go back and refocus. And then it drags over the entire week where you work, you know, on different paragraphs and ju- it drove me crazy. So I blocked Saturday and I did only this. I didn't do anything else besides this. And then as I grew my, my thought leadership platform and I was, I was writing articles, I had the podcast, I had the website, um, and I was kind of growing, I didn't have much time to do that. So whether you don't like writing or you don't have the time to write, you got to think about it as a business. A CEO doesn't do everything, right? He hires the best people and attracts the best investors to grow his company. And that's exactly how I see my syndication business. I took the tools and the knowledge that I gained at MIT and applied it into this business. From day one, I was looking at it as a, as a business, not only, okay, I need to get one deal done and then continue from there. So I, I built systems. Um, after I, there was a, a short period of time where I, I did everything, which was great because I knew now I know w- what people I really need to bring, you know, on board. And I hired people to help me with that. So I actually have a copywriter that I've hired and he's helping me write the content. Actually, he writes it now. I review everything. I authorize everything. I go over every word, but he's doing the, you know, he's, he's the one who sits for hours and hours and develop the content. Um, and I have a social media manager and she's great. She, she posts um, on my behalf. And again, everything, I'm going through everything. I guide her. It took me a while, you know, to teach her how I think and how I like things to be presented. Um, but she's helping me with, with my meetups. I have monthly meetups at, in Santa Monica. She's helping me posting the blog uh, after it's being written, she's helping me with social media, with setting up appointment, you know, meetings with investors, with everything. And awesome. that has been really, that really helped me grow very fast. When, when you're trying to do everything, your growth is really slow. And it's just, and I know some people, you know, think, oh, you know, we're just starting. We, we don't have money to start hiring a team. And as much as we'd love to grow this fast, and my answer is, A, look at it as an investment, and B, and before I get to, I get to B, people spend thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on mentoring programs, and then when it comes to hiring a team, they don't want to pay $10, $10 an hour for someone to help them. So getting the knowledge is one thing, and then taking your, your company to the next level it sometimes takes even less money um, than initially or, or what people think. So I find my, uh, my hires in Upwork and yeah, it costs money, but it doesn't cost as much when you hire contractors. There's, they're not W2s. Um, you can pay them, you know, anywhere between $10 for, I think for a decent, um, uh, you know, hire. I know some syndicators are hiring people from abroad and that has been working great for them for half the price. So that's also an option. And that's basically the thing that helped me really build my presence. And I'm still growing. The next stage is, is an Instagram account and, and a YouTube channel. Nice. So, so after, we start, after we start writing some content like that, how, well, you know, give us some techniques as far as putting that out on social media you know, what platforms should I consider and how do I do that? Yeah, it's a great question. And we're actually looking um, in, into some of the platforms that are out there. So some platforms, there are some websites that can, will automate everything. So you upload it in one place and then it just distributes it to all the other, all the different channels, which could be a good idea for someone who doesn't have an assistant. So instead of, posting manually in each website you can post it into one website and it and it sends it out automatically um to different to all the different uh, platforms do you, do you and, have one that you prefer or that you like or or do you try to do it manually on each one um so right now i'm actually i prefer that my assistant i i think that you know for me it works well when she does it manually at this point and we're all we're looking into automating this process as well um and if I were to do it on my own, I would probably have a website to do it. 
Um, because for me, I really want her to post it manually because I want her to look into, uh, to actually monitor everything, um, look at the analytics and also reply to comments. I mean, this is, and nobody's saying that, but this is how all the social media, you know, stars out there. And I'm not saying that I am, but I'm just learning from them. They don't write for the most part, they don't write their own content. They're not the ones who reply to your comment when you go to their, you know, to their homepage or, or their Facebook or LinkedIn account. They're paying people to do that. And that's the thing. It looks like they're everywhere because they are through their, their team. Mm. That's a good point. I like how you just said that, that it looks like they're everywhere, and, but they are because of their team, the, the people mm -hmm. they've surrounded themselves with. Um, yeah. So, you know, what are some other aspects as far as social media? You know, should I, do you stick with, you know, say Facebook or LinkedIn more than one or the other, or, or do you maybe have specific content for one platform or the other? Or, you know, what, what, how do you do that? Um, it, it's a good question for me you know, I've decided to be in all the major social media platforms and um, we're looking into, we're looking to analyze, you know, where we're more effective and understand why. Um, I recently, and I, and I keep listening also to podcasts and read books about it because I want to educate myself. Um, but, you know, to your question, I think that um, the most, you know, if we're talking about raising capital, the platforms that had a direct and immediate, in, almost immediate impact, um, you know, w by meeting passive investors that actually um, invested in in my deals. Uh, one of them w was Bigger Pockets. I w I'm very active there, and I actually started not because I thought it's a good platform to attract passive investors. Um, I was just curious to see what everyone else was doing, and people started reaching out to me and. Um, I, I helped them, you know, I was on the phone helping them, you know, understand like how you get into real estate or giving them tips. And I really didn't expect much. And it, it um, kind of snowballed from there. Uh, and some of them, you know, wanted to look at the deals that I was working on and ended up investing. And I've never met those people. Never. We had an hour to two hour conversation over the phone but I was on social media and they were able to reach me because, you know, there's a limit to how much, how many people, you know, that are actually interested in investing in real estate and have the means to do it. So bigger pocket has been, bigger pockets has been really, really good platform. Um, and the other one was actually my podcast. Um, a lot of investors, because they were curious, I named, um, they were curious to hear about my story. I named the first episode, Who Are You, Ellie Perlman. And I knew, well, you know, I'm always trying to kind of find interesting titles. Um, and people reached out to me and, and said, I mean, just said how, how they enjoyed listening to my story. And it really makes, I think for people, especially if they're investing with me, makes them feel that they know me and they do because they, they know who I am. They know, you know, what I've been through and it's a lot more personal than going to someone's website and looking at the deal that he has done and talking about numbers. Um, because I think by the end of the day, people invest in people and there's a lot of interesting deals out there, maybe less than, than a year or two years ago. Um, but putting your own story out there, I think really separate can really separate you from from the noise from from the competition and clear out a little bit clear out the noise out there. I like how you said people invest in people, and I, I think your even the thought leadership platform helps build those relationships. Even though you haven't, like you said, you haven't met in person, but people just learn you just by you talking. Right? I mean, on, on your podcast often. I want to tell you about an upcoming real estate investing conference hosted by my good friend, Joe Fairless. Every February, Joe brings his best ever conference to Denver, which brings together the top high-level experienced real estate speakers and sponsors that has proven to be the best ever networking, content, and strategies to help grow your portfolio. The earlier you buy, the more you save. Ticket prices increase weekly, so you want to buy today. 
I attended in 2018, and I can guarantee you do not want to miss this conference. February 22nd and 23rd, 2019 in Denver. Go to besteverconference.com to reserve your seat today. That's besteverconference.com and use hashtag Whitney to save 10%. That's hashtag Whitney. Tell everybody the name of your podcast again. So it's called That Rally Happened, Unbelievable Real Estate Story. And Rally is, a, it's E, it's sorry, it's, it's um, R-E-L-L-I-E. It's a combination of real estate, L-E, and also, it also sounds a little bit like really. So that's, uh, that's the name of my podcast. Awesome, which I highly recommend. And, you know, you talked about the use of bigger pockets. Do you, and I, I think most listeners are, you know, have heard of that website probably by now or been on there. And I hope you have an account. And if you don't, you should. Um, so do you have a, a technique, you know, that say, you know, um, how long should I be on there? Maybe what are some parts of that website that I should focus on? You know, how, how do I get connected on that website and connect to other people and provide value, you know, to others? Yeah, great question. So I think one of the main things that I have not mentioned before with uh, building your uh, thought leadership platform is be consistent. I mean, consistency is key. So whether you have a blog, podcast, a a video channel, anything that you do, it has to be consistent. If it's every day, then it should stay like that. If it's once a, a week, then that's fine. And the same way with, with bigger pockets. Um, I, my goal is to be there every day. So I'm trying to be consistent and to make at least three points of contact per day. So it could be either connecting with someone and become, you know, they have this friends requests, um, could be sending a message to someone, uh, or answer a message that someone sent to me, um, like other people's votes, uh, votes, sorry for other people's comments. And the main thing is to, to actually, you know, help other people by replying to their question and add value. And I think these are the most, and besides consistency, adding value are the next, you know, most important words when it comes to social media. If you think you're going to, I mean, if you think you're going to use social media to build a platform, to put your, to promote yourself, to put your deals out there and say, invest with me. I'm great because this and this and this, that's most likely not going to work. You got to really be genuinely interested in people and want to help. And many times I answer questions and I know, you know, most likely they're not going to invest, whether they're looking for their own deals or they say they don't have money and they want to start in, you know, investing in real estate. When you're generous and, and when you're genuinely interested in helping, you know, it, it's, all, it's very fulfilling to begin with, but it also, you know, other people see that and that's a testimony of, I think, of your character. Um, and I don't do it only for that, um, but, you know, it, it definitely helps when you help people, when you answer questions based on your idea on your knowledge, sorry, that's um, a great way to position yourself as a thought leader and people who are looking for, you know, to deploy their capital. They see, they see you, you know, they they see how you help other people and that definitely helps, you know, um, it, they will be interested in investing. Some of them will be interested in investing with you because that's the type of person that they would want to work with. Nice. Nice. So before we have to go, a few questions, Ellie. And, uh, you know, what, what's been the one thing that's contributed to your success so far? What's the most important thing? The most important thing? Um, I think getting an unlimited, you know, support from, uh, from my husband. Uh, mm-hmm. When I started, he was my boyfriend, then my fiance, then my husband. Um, because things are, are, they're tough. I mean, it's not, and you, you probably know it, they're good days or bad days and it's, it's a roller coaster and you really need to have someone um, to help you, you know, move forward and, and to pick you up when you're down. That's, that's probably my favorite answer for that, for that question that I've had yet. Cause I can relate to that uh, just so much. Um, 
it, it's a it's a toll on everybody, right? I mean, all the hours you're putting in that your spouse has got to be supportive. So we're, it's just not going to happen. But uh, what what have you found to be the the hardest part of the syndication business? The hardest part of the syndication it may be raising in- capital or finding a deal or maybe something else, maybe mm-hmm. social media. I don't know. Um, actually two things. One is to find a deal. It was actually easier to find capital than, than finding the right deal. Most deals are overpriced right now. Um, and it's, it's very challenging to find that deal and you have to stay disciplined, um, and not underwrite, you know, be very conservative with your underwriting. Um, and that changed the numbers, you know, you can always massage the numbers and, and the, the model was, were spit out the numbers you want if you're going to be very forgiving. So this, you know, this is something, um, I think, so one thing is that find a deal is the hardest thing right now. Um, and the other part that was the hardest for me was, um, to delegate authorities. You know, I think a lot of people who start businesses, they have type A personality like myself. We want to do everything, want to control everything, not because we're control freaks, but because we really want everything to be a hundred percent and you're just going to go crazy. So finding people and teaching them um, and you know, how you want things to be done and let them help you build your brand and your business. That was, you know, hard for me because I wanted to do it all and I have for a short period of time and it was difficult. Mm -hmm. So just learning how to, you know, give up some of the control and, and allow them to make mistakes, be okay with everything not being perfect. That was a huge, you know, growth point for me. Um, but it really brought my business to the next level. I can relate completely to that because <laughs> I, I hesitated, you know, to even start get the podcast launched because I, I wanted it to be just right. Right. I wanted it to mm-hmm. all these things to be laid out and just be just right. And then, you know, my mentor said, you know, done is better than perfect. Right. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's get it rolling. So, you yeah. know, what advice would you give Ellie to someone who comes to you and says, you know, Ellie, I, I want to get into the syndication business. You know, what, what I need to do, just maybe a couple of key things that I could focus on to help me get started. Sure. So the one thing is educate yourself. Um, you can't really do anything uh, in any capacity if you don't know what you're doing. So there are multiple ways of doing that. You can find a mentor which can accelerate your growth. Um, you can read books, you can listen to podcasts and, um, you know, have that good, you know, base of information. Um, that's really key because you can't find, you're, you won't be able to find deals and price them right if you don't know how to do it. Um, So you can overpay for anything and then crash and burn later on. Um, And it's gonna be hard for you to raise capital if you don't know how to speak about it intelligently and answer questions. So education is key. Um, And also if you're just starting, um, there's, I mean, I think joining someone who has more experience that you can learn from, that you can leverage their credibility, um, that you can partner with and you can always add value in some way. You can help them raise capital. You can help, help them, um, find a deal if you're, you know, the boots on the ground where they're active in, or you can help them with marketing. Uh, I just met a, a lovely young lady yesterday and, uh, she wanted to ask me how she can get into real estate. And we had a conversation and at the end she asked me, how can I help you? And, she's helping me now with with building part, you know, of my business and she's happy to do it because she's going to learn along the way things about real estate that she, that she just doesn't know. Um, So there's always way for you to add value in some capacity, even if it's not directly in real estate, but with knowing people with capital or knowing marketing or anything else, you can always find a way to be valuable um, and it will pay off. Nice. Uh, Ellie, I just, one more question. And, you know, is there some way that you, um, that you've improved your business lately that, that we could all apply to our business? Maybe some, some way you haven't mentioned, um, that, that we could all apply. Um, if improve my business, let me think. I mean, every day is, is an improvement. Um, I think that using a, um, a platform to manage, um, people that you collaborate with, um, it could be even someone you're partnering with and if you're bringing capital and they're bringing the deal or people that you hired, 
Um, so I'm using Airtable and there's so many other tools out there. Um, Asana is one of them. Mondays is another where I created processes. So each team member knows exactly what they need to do. And when they're done, they move it to the next step. And then the other person gets a notification and they know what to do. So it's, it's a very robust process. And it, it we're also using in the, the, the uh, there's internal conversation mechanism there. It's, it's kind of built in. So we can have conversations about a deal and it's all saved in, in one place instead of having multiple emails. So it's been very effective and I can see also where everyone is. If there's something that they're stuck on because you see the status of each task, it's basically broken down to haven't started, in progress, waiting for Ellie's review or stuck. And then I know if something is happening and this way you can, as a business owner, as a syndicator, you can oversee what everyone else is doing, especially if they're remote and they're not sitting next to you because, you know, they're, um, because they're not W2s, they're contractors and contractors usually don't come to the office every day. So that has been really tremendous, a tremendous tool that helped me scale and helped me understand, you know, how to manage people. And it's just been great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ellie. You've been a great guest and I really appreciate your time and you being on the show. Tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you and your, and your podcast. Sure. So my podcast is pretty much, you know, everywhere um, on iTunes, Stitcher, Stitcher um, Google Play, um, and it's called That Really Happened, Unbelievable Real Estate Stories. Um, if you also, you know, type Ellie Perlman, you will see the podcast and you can uh, also read about me and see what, what I'm up to um, on my website, ellieperlman.com. So it's E-L-L-I-E. P-E-R-L-M-A-N.com. Thank you again, Ellie. I hope the listeners learned a lot about how to ramp up their social media and how to get on bigger pockets and meet people and add value. And uh, I hope you'll connect with me on lifebridgecapital.com. I hope you'll make an appointment so we can chat and I can help you also any way that I can and uh, join the Facebook group so we can all learn from experts like Ellie and grow our businesses together. And we will talk to you tomorrow. All right. Absolutely. Thank you for having me with me. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, Ellie. Phoenix Syndication Workshop 2019 is a premier educational and networking event hosted by noted real estate investors, Ben Labovich and Sam Grooms. PSW is a two-day event being held in Phoenix, Arizona on January 26th and 27th. The first day is dedicated exclusively to nuts and bolts underwriting training. Ben and Sam will give a detailed presentation of their approach, technique, and underwriting model, which allows them to pick out the best deals in this very competitive environment. A recent case study will be utilized as a basis for this training. On day two, the attendees will learn from industry professionals. Ben and Sam will be joined by a mortgage broker, property manager, and an attorney to answer your questions. As a bonus, everyone will visit the property to experience the process in action. This type of in-depth and actionable access is truly rare and invaluable. Ben and Sam are passionate about giving back, so 20% of the gross revenue from this event will be donated to a nonprofit. Register for the Phoenix Syndication Workshop by visiting justaskbenwhy.com forward slash Phoenix. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.